Okay, I'm not a master at SketchUp. I know enough to get by, and I probably know enough to teach any of you that want to learn how to do it, or I've been scared to jump in because you're like, ah, computers, blah, 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 I don't wanna do it, I like pen and paper. Whatever the case, 3D modeling, powerful tool, really helpful with woodworking, planning projects out, and the best part about SketchUp is that it's free. So if you actually go to SketchUp.com, and then you go try SketchUp, and then you go to personal projects, you'll see that there's a button here for SketchUp free. You just click that, start modeling, and you're good to go. That's really it. I have an account, so I'm already logged in. You can see a couple of my past projects here. Like I, one of the, the farmhouse style dining table I made on here, that mini fridge coffee table, built that in on SketchUp. Recently need to figure out how to model my kitchen. So I basically just made my kitchen on SketchUp. It's actually really cool if you want to see. But yeah, I needed to get like some dimensions because I was going to do some some new countertops and I wanted to figure out how much, uh, you know, what I needed. So I mapped out my kitchen in SketchUp. Um, so yeah, it's got a lot of different uh, uses, but I love just planning things out like the garage uh, storage, garage overhead storage, shelving that I made, boom, like have that mapped out my garage opening and it just gave me everything I need to do. All right, so I need to make a workbench, and I thought that uh, I'd put you guys through my process of creating something or 3D modeling something in SketchUp. So the process for the workbench is going to be really, really easy, or the style of the workbench is going to be really, really simple. I just want to use two by fours, and I would want to use a plywood. So the only really dimensions that I care about is that I want it to be a little bit lower than the surface of my table saw, so I could use it as an outfeed assembly. And then, yeah, that's really it. So that's 36 and a half inches. And I wrote out some dimensions. So I want it to be 36 and a half inches tall. I want it to be about six feet wide and 36 inches deep. So yeah, cool. Let's uh, let's build it. So when you're in SketchUp, it's going to open up that new page. But I'm going to click new and it'll pretty much bring you to the same spot. This guy always pops up. I don't like him, so I get rid of him. Probably good for perspective. Anyways, so the first thing that I want to do is that I would like to map out kind of like where I like to put my project. So if there, if you have requirements for how tall it can be or how wide, whatever, I like to make a little box and then like make sure that everything kind of fits in there. Yeah, so why don't I do that? I'm gonna press R for rectangle and that's gonna bring up a little tool you can see down here where it's drawing. And I'm just gonna click and then draw out a rectangle. You can see is, you can see that as I move this along, the dimensions in the lower right change. But what we know is that we can just click it, draw whatever shape, and then immediately after you can type in the dimensions and it will change. So it looks like it's what, 10 inches by four feet. So the four feet's the long part. So I know that it's gonna be 36 inches. And then I wanna make that 36 by, what did I say? Five feet, six feet, we'll do five feet. So that's what it will look like. Pretty standard, cool. All right, so we have that mapped out. The next thing that I like to do is I like to like lift it up. So I need to know what is the maximum I can go in. So to do that, I'm gonna hit P on my keyboard for, what is this called? Push pull, click that and I'm gonna drag it up. It doesn't really matter what, because we can click wherever and then just change the dimension after that. So I'm gonna click, let it go. And then I know that I want it to be 36 and a half inches tall. 36.5, enter. All right, so that's kind of like the parameters, the box of what I want to build. We can't, it's it's a big cube, we can't build in it. So I like to go ahead and click on each of the sides and delete it. And then it kind of gives you the, the frame of which your project's going to be in. So in order to not have it move around or click the individual pieces of this box or container as you start to map things out, I like to highlight all of it. And then you press G for creating a new component. It's basically just like grouping all those lines to create that cube into one solid piece that we can go in and like kind of explode further and edit later if we need to. So you can name it. I don't, I'm just gonna press okay. Cool. There's the parameters of our box. So I do know like if you wanna start with the top, you could do that. You can start with the sides, really anywhere. I'm going to do uh, the top first. So I'll press R for rectangle. And now it makes it easy because I can just go in the corner and then just draw the same rectangle for the top because I know that that is my dimension. So then I can click it again, press P for push pull, and then basically I'm gonna drag it down and click whatever. It's set to one inch right now, but I'm gonna use three quarter of inch plywood. So three dash or whatever, four. Cool, there's our top. Same thing that you wanna do before that we did with our little cube, right? Yeah. 
if you triple click it, then it selects everything that you just kind of made. So I'm going to triple click the box, press G again and add a new component. And there we have it. I don't really know where to start. So I think I'm going to just go at this corner right here to draw a stud basically because it needs to rest on it. So I'm going to press R again, a rectangle, and then draw from underneath the top of the table all the way to the other side underneath, drag this down. So if we want our two by four to be on its side, then this is going to be three and a half inches, right? So bring it, bring it down three and a half inches. And then that's that. So every time you draw a rectangle, it's just gonna give you a flat 2D piece. And then that's why we always click the P for push pull, click it, and then turn it into a 3D piece. So it's a, it's a two by four, then we know that it's gonna be one and a half inches. Same process for the top, triple click it, press G, make it a com uh, component. So now we're at the part where we can basically replicate or duplicate these these pieces that we've already made to the other side because we're gonna have a lot of the same shapes and the same things that we need to build. So if I click this, this is the process that I'll take for that. This two by four, I'm gonna put it on this other side. So I press M for move. I'm gonna select this corner because then it's gonna attach over here to this side. But when you start to move it, you'll see that uh, it just moves the individual piece. But if you just press control on your keyboard, it creates a copy. And then you can see that it's being dragged along the red axis. If you hit shift, and I'm sorry for doing a lot of hot keys, but this is my workflow. If you hit shift, now wherever you move your cursor, it's just gonna be locked to that axis. So move it over here. Cool, now we have our other side. Sweet. So workbench looking pretty good. Now we need to connect these two pieces up here. So to do that, I'm gonna to go to one of the two by fours and draw a rectangle on this face right here. And we're gonna drag it up here. So because it's just gonna match this two by four that exists. So we know that the three and a half dimension will always be the same. So the only one that we really need to change is going to be this width thing. So that's gonna be the, the inch and a half that we need to do. So if we just go all the way out here, Right, we can see down at the dimensions, it says three and a half inches by five and nine sixteenths. We're not changing the three and a half. So what you can do, so instead of writing it all out again, just hit comma on your keyboard and then put in the second dimension of one and a half inches. Press enter and you're good to go. Change this back to the cursor so that we're press P for push pull again, and then drag this out and attach it to the other one. And then again, we're gonna triple click it, press G and make a component. Cool, now we have the other side of that workbench. What I wanna do, and this is a process that I've, I've done a couple times, a cool little trick is, I wanna put at least like two more slats in here to give the top some support because it's just gonna be a single sheet of, of plywood up there. So what I can do is take this, press M for move, and I'm, I know I'm gonna do the same thing that I did before, grab one of the corners, right? Press control to create a duplicate, drag it all the way to where I want this to be and like, and click and secure it. Now without typing anything, I think this is something that I've done before as well, but if we can just type in divided by two, it makes another one or we press divided by three and it adds another and it equally spaces it between those two beginning point and the end point. So it's an easy way to not have to do the math in order to figure out the spacing between them so everything lines up perfectly. All right, so we got that top piece down. In the last workbench that I made, similar concept here. So I had two of these little frame pieces. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm going to somehow select this one. I'm gonna hold the shift key down, select that side, that side, basically selecting everything except for the top piece and the little wire frame. And now that we have kind of the the frame itself, I'm going to turn this into its own component. So a bunch of components into another component by hitting G and pressing OK. So now when I click it, it selects all of the pieces together, which is going to make things a lot easier when we need to duplicate this and just bring it down a little bit. So that's what I'm going to do. Press M for move, select the corner, bring it down a little bit, hit control, creates a copy, hold shift, stays on the axes, bring it down to wherever you need to do. So. You can see down at the bottom right, the distance will change as you move it up and down. But a little trick that I usually do is it's easier to kind of measure up from the ground than it would be from whatever corner we selected. So I'll bring this down all the way to the ground and move it there. And now I know if I want to lift it up, 
I can hold the shift key, put it along this line as well. But when I let go, and now I can type in the exact distance that I want that bottom corner to be for that frame from the ground. So if we can say oh, four inches. All right, cool. So we're almost done. That's pretty much the gist of it. I do want to put another top on this piece down here eventually, but we're going to do that after we put in the legs. And to do that, I'm going to go into one of these corners down here. And I think I want the legs this way. So it's basically going to rest in this little corner here. So I know if I press R for rectangle, I'm going to draw it on this face and go this way. So this again, three and a half inches is going to be locked. So then we have to make this one 1 1.5 comma and then three and a half press enter. Okay, that's fine for now. I'm sure there's better ways to construct this, but for the most part, this is all I need to do. So go to this little piece again, select the face, push pull, and then we're going to bring it out three and a half inches. 3.5. Cool. So now we have our little like blocking piece in here. So you could create the leg piece a few different ways. So I'm not going to turn it into a component just yet because obviously this is a short leg. So what we need to do is grab the top part, the top face, P for push pull and somehow move our camera around so we can bring it underneath, which I always forget how to do. Okay. Where'd that go? Down here. Push pull. Slide up. Nope, don't hit space bar when you're doing that. Push pull. Yeah, if you hold shift and I use my little mouse wheel to like move the camera around, it helps out a little bit. Basically, I just want to make sure that it goes to this height. Good there. Okay, now I'm going to grab the bottom of this. Press P for push pull. And then just bring it down to the bottom. And there you have your leg piece. Yeah, so I'm not sure how I, I don't think I want it that way. I think I want to rotate it um, so they're facing this way and not that way. So to do that first, I'm going to triple click it, press G, turn it into a component, and then I'm going to rotate it. I'm always terrible at doing this, but I know it starts with the move key or maybe we can go over here to rotate. Yeah, there we go. And I know you have to like select where you want it to rotate from all I know is I need to turn it 90. So I'm just going to try to do that. Oh, maybe I can just click over here and then drag this and then, oh, that's where it rotates around. All right, cool. Anyways, I'm sure there's a better way of doing that. I'm just going to move it back to where it was by hitting M and then kind of just locking it into place. Yeah, here we go. Go in that corner. Looks good to me. All right, sweet. So there's one leg piece. And now I'm just going to press M and I'm going to move it over here. Control to create a copy. Hold shift while it's on the red axis and then bring it to that corner. Cool. Hold these two, select both of them. I'm going to create another component. Press M for move. And then I'm just going to Drag it on over to the other side. Make sure it locks in that corner. Cool. So I could take the time to build another top for the bottom here, but ultimately the process is just the same. Just bring it down here and then just knock off the corners or however you want to structure it. But yeah, that, that really is it. As simple as it can be. Now, the next real step for this would be to create your cut list. And the way that I do that is by marking off pieces that are all, are all the same color and then kind of just dropping them together. I would basically, actually, this is what I do. Create a copy of this. I'm going to delete the wireframe. We don't need that anymore. And I'm going to like right click some of these components and I'm just going to explode it so I can grab the individual pieces. All right, sweet. So now I can go over here on the right hand side. And this is what I'll do is I'll grab the is it styles materials and I'll find some colors. So like, I'll just make sure that this one, this one, this one, and this one are all the same. I'll go grab this one, this one, this one, this one, and whatever. And now what we could do is on the ground, I'll just draw a rectangle. And this will be the similar process that we took at the beginning from creating our little wireframe to put our project in. But for now, I'm just going to basically lay a two by four on the ground and stack all the pieces to figure out what the best way to cut them is. So I know drawing a rectangle on the ground, we're going to make it three and a half by 
eight feet long. So there's our two by four. So now what we can do is that I can put like, take this piece, move it over here, and I'll just kind of rotate it if I can. And then move it down here. So now I know that uh, I can get one of those pieces from that. Or maybe I can grab one of these, move it over here again, and you kind of just follow the same process. I wish I had a better way of rotating these. And if anyone knows, please leave them in the comments down below. But um, if I could just snap this corner down over here, I'm sure there's a way. I rotate it this way, and then I'm just gonna move it down here. All right, so now I'm gonna take that original frame for the two by four and just see that's the problem why you don't make why you need to make things into components okay. move very copy all right so now when they're on the ground like this we know that we can get rid of the pieces if we use them here so instead of dragging and rotating them all so and i know i have this one so i'm going to move another copy of that over here delete that do it again um, can we fit another one we cannot hey good to know so you kind of play around with it um move all of your pieces in a way that gives you the best kind of like cut list and uh to minimize your waste but that's the process that'll take for that so yeah there's the workbench my dog's coming up and he's probably going to end this recording for me right now because there's a motorcycle running by good all right guys thank you so much for watching if you're not already please subscribe thumbs up would be great on this video if you liked it comment down below all of the stuff and i'll see you guys shortly in another fun and exciting video on casual builds see you guys